Welcome to episode one of the Improverts Podcast. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Hannah. I'm the newest Improvert, and I've actually got um, Orla with me today. Say hey, Orla. Hi. Yeah, it's me. I'm Orla. <laughs> it is I. <laughs> the rumors are true. Um, we're hello. Welcome. First episode. Um, usually outside of pandemic uh restrictions improverts is a show that happens every friday um with the at bedlam theater and there's like live improv shows but obviously we can't do that so we've been working out what the best format is and we've landed on a podcast it's going to be a different format from our usual shows because shows would just be like game after game after game after game because it's a podcast we thought we'd have a little chat in between uh, give you a little bit like <laughs> behind the screen of <laughs> <laughs> what's been going on. Um, but yeah, we're really, really excited and we hope that you enjoy it. Give us some feedback on Instagram, you know, whatever. Yeah, and also submit your suggestions on Instagram. Mm. Instagram, I Instagram. didn't even mean that. Whoa, what a pun. <laughs> um, I think that used to be in the in the end hosting Oh, it still uh, is in the end hosting. Yes, yes. Yeah. You're right. You're totally right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, we are so psyched. We're on our very fancy mics right now. We've got brand new mics and they're so, they feel so official. They let you do things like this. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Improverts Podcast. We really hope you enjoy the comedy that's on here today. <laughs> the Improverts ASMR Podcast. That okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounded beautiful oh, thank in my you, headphones. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I don't actually even know know if I mentioned that this is an improv podcast. Did I? Did I say that? I, I can't remember. Excited. I got too excited. Um, well, it is an improv podcast. <laughs> Listen up, guys! It's an improv podcast. Um, we have been throughout the week, like having little Zoom calls and doing improv with each other over Zoom, socially distanced. And we've been recording them. And then this is just a little selection of some of the games we did um, this week. Uh, first up, should we introduce the first game? Yeah. So first, we're going to we're gonna play for you. Well, we're not. It's already been played. Um, <laughs> this was a game of Marriage Counselor that we recorded um, where Josh is the counselor and Hannah and Zach are the couple. And Marriage Counselor is the is an endowment game where um the couple don't know the suggestions that have been suggested as to why they need marriage counseling um so hannah and zach had to guess guess why they were annoyed at each other and obviously josh knew and it's his job throughout the scene to kind of spur them on their way to guessing and um the suggest I think the su- the suggestions were Hannah was annoyed with Zach because he kept slowly but surely painting the house orange, and Zach was annoyed with Hannah because she uh, would every night as he was asleep cut a centimeter off of his hair, and obviously they didn't know this when the scene started, but uh, as it, as the scene goes, they they guess. So enjoy. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for coming. I'm really excited for this. Really excited. I, I'm young. I'm eager. I'm keen. I'm, I'm, I'm lubed up, as they say in the industry. Um, oh, my. Oh, sorry. That, that wasn't too much, was it? Uh, no, we've been around the block. It was just a little surprising coming from our marriage counsellor. It's not, it's not that we haven't heard that kind of thing before. It's just been a bit of a while since someone spoke to us like that. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Unless you count Larry from next door. Right. Well, we might get onto the issue of Larry in a bit. I'm sorry to uh, to th- throw that what seems to be a bit of a spanner in the work by saying Larry's that. not sorry. an issue. He's just a diversion. Sorry. A di- I didn't quite catch that last bit. My, my hearing aid was off. Would you I was telling him about Larry, our saucy neighbour. Oh. Oh, 
good. <laughs> yes, but d- don't don't worry, don't worry. We won't dwell on Larry because that wasn't what you included in the emails, was it? It wasn't what you really wanted to talk about. Um, let me just, Gwenda, is it Gwenda? Yes. Yeah. That is his name. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, Gwenda. Um, I just wanted to uh, talk to you specifically straight away because mm. I know I know that you uh, must be annoyed. And looking at your appearance, I can see exactly why you would be annoyed. It's really, it's really, it's really made quite an unsettling look to you, hasn't it? Is it that clear when you look at my face how peeved I am? <laughs> mm, yes, not not just your face that's the problem, but you know what what sits atop it. Oh, my hair is in absolute tatters. I've been up nights, tossing and turning. You've been you've been up in the night. I thought well, I've been, you know. Awake or, you know, restless, as it were. Gosh, really? Well, it was my understanding from the email that this had, had actually been occurring whilst you whilst you weren't awake. But has it also well, been happening? So when he says he's been up nights, he's up like maybe once or twice a night. Compared to me, old night owl over here, I lie very, 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 very quietly. And then oh, when I... he wakes up, he goes back to sleep. And baby, I'm awake. That's when I do my business. Oh, I thank you for clarifying, Gwendolyn. Um, occasionally, you know, I sleep fine most of the time. But recently, you know, I get up, I go to the toilet, I read a chapter of a book. I'm restless. You know, I'm still sleeping technically. And you, you talked to me about that trip to the toilet, actually, in the email. You said, you said um, that, you, that it was always quite upsetting. You'd go to the toilet and you'd catch yourself in the mirror, catch your appearance, wouldn't you? Aye. Aye, you're not wrong. I'd... And just explain to me what you'd see. Well, I'd, I'd see myself, or the man that I've become, staring back at me, going, Who are you? Who... Are you? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just need the toilet. And then the man says, did you think you'd be doing this at your age? And I say, no. And I look like god awful. My hair is in oh. tatters. Your hair, your hair is in tatters. And it's not just that it's in tatters, but it's also not what it once was, is it? It's not luscious no. and, and long. It's thinning and grey and there's a big bald patch on the top. Ah! That's what I wanted to talk about, the bold patch. We oh. we both know why the bold patch is there, don't we? Aye. Um, well, it's not it's not natural. No. I would just say he's he's got a, actually a very impressive head of hair for his age. It's just not really what I'm into, you know? I like an old balding man who looks like a monk. And that's why you do what you do, isn't it? <laughs> that's why I get my little handiwork going. Mm-hmm. And it's strange, you know, because up until about... A few months ago, my hair was the talk of the town. People would come from miles around just to stroke my locks. I mean, oh my god. But now, now your loving now, wife does what suddenly, she does. Suddenly, mm-hmm. suddenly, overnight, it's like she's been cutting my hair or something. Like, overnight, like she's been like, like chopping it with scissors or like shaving like a big patch. Like, that's it. Shaving. Like shaving a bald patch or something. But the, the the big patch hasn't occurred instantly, has it? It's been the more nights that you sleep, the more the more this patch has been appearing. It's, she seems to be doing it, you know, uh, periodically each night. The, the same amount each night is 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 being That's taken. That's right, actually. Like it's like a li- it's like incremental. It's like she chops a bit off, and then and then the next night she'll go in for a wee bit more, and. Like, I'd, it's like she chops off. It's like about five centimeters a night, like five. an inch, like a like two inches a night. It's 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 that mu- an inch. And see, in the email you clarified it was slightly slightly less. In fact, less than five centimeters. <laughs> well, I guess I'm exaggerating. When is a real effect. drama queen? Don't let her get all the facts straight. <laughs> all right, you know, it's rare that I have something to talk to Mr. Young, cool, hippy dippy therapist over here. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's no need for that. There's no Dude, need for that. Dude, we do love coming to see you. <laughs> I, I love it too. Look, we'll, we'll get on to you. I just, I just want to tell you that I'm here. I appreciate the issue. So, yeah, your wife is cutting your hair. She's cutting off how much did you say each night? I'd say it's about a centimetre, maybe... That's exa- a centimeter. That's a centimeter the problem. A night. No. And 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 lo- looking at you now, my gosh, it's almost all gone, isn't it? It is. Well, and... 
How was I to know you didn't like that? <laughs> well, you could have asked. Could perhaps, be... perhaps, perhaps you were doing it as a bit of a, a way of revenge, were you? To, to be quite, seems quite a spiteful act against the, you know, you have quite an annoyance with your loving husband, Gwendolyn, here. Uh, Gwendolyn. Gwenda is what I call him, yes. Apologies, Gwenda. I should be on the same I know, Gwenda, bank. Gwendolyn, it gets very, very confusing. You should see our mail. I'm always opening letters telling me to get a prostate exam. <laughs> I, I, I am your therapist. I'll, I'll get it right next time. Sorry, Gwendolyn. Please, carry on. What, 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 what is the problem? I see he's still got a bit, of, a bit of paint on his hands today. He must have been doing it as you left. Oh, well, when is he not doing it, if you know what I mean? I'm afraid I don't. Elaborate. Painting. A lot of the time, he's doing a lot of painting. Mm. A lot, uh, co- constantly? Or is it more of a... Is it in a sporadic manner? Oh, very sporadic. Very sporadic. I can never know when it's going to happen, but when it does... Woo! Mm. Well, I mean, I don't know when the inspiration's going to strike. No, that's very true. Artists don't know when the inspiration will start, strike. I think I think Monet said something similar to that. I think I he mean, did, didn't he? I mean, if you've seen what he did, I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far as Monet. I think uh you know, a little a little uh, you know, you, you know. know, a bit more expressionist with those bright yeah, colors. Perhaps. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe a little bit more uh maybe a little bit more finger painting or you something. Don't yeah. have... Never so... mind, never mind, never mind. No, 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 Gwenda. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm talking a lot. This this is a space for everyone. This is. Uh, I was just gonna say she don't half moan a about it (laughs) about the the painting. God, I can't stay mad at you. (laughs) Anyway, it is quite annoying though. Yes, I I suppose it would be all right if it was just you know one particular thing, but it's it's not. It's it's, you know it's the (laughs) all-encompassing system that holds your many little things. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, you said little things and that always sets Quinder off. <laughs> oh, I love those little things. Sorry, I can be a bit more straightforward with you. If it was a plant pot, if it was a little vase that he was painting this particular colour, then I'm sure you'd allow it. But it's not. When you have guests that come, it's the first thing they see. The, you know, they, sure. they must say many things about it. Oh, they say so many things about it. Because he's also, he's gone outside. Mm-hmm. On the bricks. Mm-hmm, yes. Of our house. Yes, he has. He's painting all over it, and it's like, it's fine, but I wish he had asked me, because it's now our house in our perfect little town has become a bit of an eyesore, you know? And that's not good for our relationship with Larry. Mm-hmm. I, I understand. I had a relationship with my with my neighbour one time, uh, but that's another story. Uh, basically, Ooh, Doctor Jude. <laughs> yes, maybe soon enough I'll be talking to you about my problems. But before I do, <laughs> I think I think the real issue is is that if you were if you had perhaps adjusted if your painting was of a of a colour different to that of the the bricks, then perhaps it would have been innovative and allowed but it, it's not is it it's you've almost gone over the bricks with the exact same color and you know simply wasted a bit of paint yes i mean it's just red all a kind of ready brownie mm, we're on a different page here i don't really consider bricks to be red you know okay well you know i am colorblind so honestly the colors sometimes run past me but sorry i know i, I, I don't I, like it i didn't mean to mock you i didn't realize you were colorblind well, no, I mean, it was uh, incredibly offensive, but I'll move on. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn, yes. unclench your fists now. He's all oh, right. I don't, okay, okay, okay. You know what? You know, you know how to, you know how to calm me down, Gwendolyn. Um, I just don't like the paint on the outside of the house, particularly when it's like, it's just nothing, you know? He's not trying to make a statement. He's just, he's just making our house all wet. Mm. Well, in, in this particular colour, though, are you calm now? Can I talk about this? Um, uh, oh, hold on a second. <sighs> yes, you may proceed, Dr. Jude. He is painting your your house, yes. And he's, it's become a bit of an eyesore, yes. And just 
Tell me now. I want you to say it. I want you to take a deep breath and picture the color. I know it's hard for you, but here at my therapy sessions, I always think it's best to say the problem before we overcome it. So I'd like you to tell me the color that he's painting the house. He's painting the house. Da daddy. Oh. Daddy. What? What? Dad. Da daddy. Mummy's put yes. something in my pat lunch that I don't like. Was it? Was it a banana? No, it was a tangerine. A, a tangerine. A tangerine. Jimmy, Jimmy, give me a tangerine. Give it to me now. There you go, Daddy. I promise that you will never see anything like this in your lunchbox ever again. Thanks, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. I love you too. What a father. That's what a beautiful. father. That's Jude. so nice to see. You I, got it all. I read a lot of parenting books. Uh, and it's it's very clear to see. But um, my neighbour, Larry, keeps on coming over and complaining because our house is just orange. Mm. And he's just painted the whole front of the house orange, just well, sporadically. And, you know, he didn't consult me about it. Well, what and... can I say? Gwendolyn, you've been off. You've been away so much at your prostate exams. I've, I've gotten... I've gotten lonely back at the house, and the world is my canvas, as you know, but now that I know that it it makes you so sad, I won't do it anymore. Gwenda. Oh, Gwenda. Gwendolyn. Yes. I'm, I'm glad we've been able to come to a resolution. It really quite excites me, and here in my hand I have, as you can see, a, a tangerine that my little boy just gave to me. <laughs> oh. I'm going to peel the tangerine and hand you oh. each a segment. Oh, dude. Oh, that's beautiful. I would like you to think of this tangerine as as the body of Jesus Christ. I'm begging hands, please, please, tangerine, come on back to me. Do what I need, tangerine, do this for me. Hands, please, please, tangerine, sugar, honey, sweet. Oh, what a <laughs> hilarious scene. <laughs> I'm, I don't... No, we were just reminiscing about how the audio uh, almost... Mm didn't make it for that yeah. scene it was uh, it was a stressful it was a, actually would have been really sad because i really really enjoyed that scene it was fun it was a good one yeah. we've had yeah we've been the the technology has been a bit of a journey we uh i didn't know that, that the mics are really very very good and when we were doing a session the other day my throat got really like uh, painful and so i were tried to like <laughs> i tried to move carefully away from the zoom and did like a little water gargle to try oh. and preserve my dignity being and like we... oh, well done hannah and then when I came or we could back... hear in the background was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> hannah gargling <laughs> Oh, I just came so back sensitive. and all of you guys were like, we could hear you, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I also don't, I keep like leaning right in. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it right now. It's like literally sit back. I mm. keep I keep wanting to shout into the mic. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, we got like so overexcited when we first got the mics. We There was a, a cometh. They, we did a game called Cometh the Hour, like immediately afterwards, no warm ups or anything. There was like a, a game where two mundane people try to solve a like earth shattering crisis. And it was so chaotic. <laughs> it was, I don't know why we didn't think we needed a warm up. Everyone was so <laughs> pumped. We were like, should we just, should we just, let's just go, do it. Let's go just in. go. Let's I'm go in the moment. In. I'm in the moment, guys. Yes, and like, <laughs> yeah. So um, that might, it's, it, it's extremely long. Um, it might appear someday. It might appear. It's 13 minutes long, which is why we couldn't put it in this episode. But it is a wild ride of just people, Josh and Ola mainly, getting really, really excited. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I had a lot of fun. I had that. so much fun, honestly, watching you guys and then doing like a tiny walk on at the end as Granny Big Laps. <laughs> Granny Big Laps. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, okay. okay, next up we have a game of rat battle. 
um, that was recorded. It's got Zach, Rob and Josh in it, in that order. They were playing... It's basically just like a normal three-person scene. I think the suggestion that was given was like George the Third, the musical. So mm-hmm. kind of like a funny uh, twist on Hamilton to... I think... Let me see if we have any... See who suggested that. Because what we're trying to do is put um, little suggestion boxes on our Instagram page. So if you want to get involved with the podcast you can um, suggest on our Instagram, on our stories. Let me see if this person gave us the name or whether they wanted to be silent. Um, rap battle. No, it was anonymous. Never mind. So, was, <laughs> Oh, no, battle. I remember that because we were like, oh, my God, so poetic. It's George the Third, And then it's like a nun. Oh, yeah. The suggester. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that poetic. So <laughs> poetic, guys. <laughs> Can't oh my god, the poetry, <laughs> the beauty. Um, okay, so that's what we're gonna we're gonna play next, and yeah, it was it was it was so great. So, get in, enjoy. Well, that's rather awkward. Didn't think they'd actually do it. That was just a. Uh... Something they'd been threatening, but I seem to have lost the entirety of the Americas. Fuck. Um. Ugh. Oh, what a pickle. Um. Okay, right. Come on. Come on, Georgie boy. You've got this. What are you going to do? Okay. You're going to. You're. You're going to send a fleet. Yes. That's what you'll do. You'll send a fleet. Those Americans won't know their meat. They're finished. That's right. Beat it. You Washington skanks. I'm the king and I'm so dank. That's right. I'm George the Fourth. Oh yeah. Call forth the army. They're gonna come invade you. Bar me. Oh, you won't need you. We invade you. Tornado. We're coming to America. Nehru. Like the king, not the king. He's a president of India. In the future, I saw a prophecy. Someone spoke to me, he said, in a thousand years. There won't be anything left but for now we invade America. Invade America. We take back America. Invade America. Invade America. Invade America. I'm coming back and I'm coming to get you. Yeah. Not so fast, King George Toi. You have forgotten that I are already threatened by my brave nation, uh, identified by the same principles of liberty and egality and fraternity as our American allies. Ah, yes. It is I. One second. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, George, you really don't know what is coming to you. Oh, you really thought things were bad, but now they're gonna get much, much worse. Because here I am. Bang. Wapow. Uh, you're gonna have no money in your purse when you're done with us funding all your armies all across the world. When we punch you in your face, the pass, it go shooting into a whirl. I am the governor of the French nation and I may suffer from acute constipation, but it doesn't bother me when I can see all the English folks go hee hee hee, run away as fast as they do, red coats all, and I say to you, this is a bit like Hamilton, but maybe a slightly different tone. And I have to ask you kindly, just back off. You don't know what you're up to, pursuing wars in foreign climes. Cease the colonialism, George. And just listen to Canadian artist Grimes. She married Elon Musk. In the future, I had a prophecy too. That's what I know, and now so do you. This is the rap that a Frenchman's done, and now it's finished, and also it was fun. Daddy, well. daddy, 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 who's this man? Daddy, 
He what was. He, who's this man? Why is he angry? What are you doing, Daddy? He's he's the King of France. He's he's just come over to give Daddy a little warning, but. Don't worry about anything, son. Daddy is not yes, scared at you all. You get your nose out of this, you tiny infant oh, monarch. Not Ling. What? Don't you speak to my son like that? I speak to son of our world. In my palace? Can we please not just be friends? Look, Daddy, we were learning about this in school today. Friendship. Oh, I'll tell you. You about were learning it. about friendship in school. Shut up, Daddy. Let me tell you about it. Friendship. That was the title of our lesson, Friendship. And it was given by Mrs. Brown. Friendship. Man, your, your kid sucks. She was talking about the town, all the people that are in it. I said, come on, miss. Tell me the deal. It seemed really quite strange that everyone could get along. There was a little smell, yeah, there was a little pong. So I questioned her. I said, listen, miss, you can't go around giving everyone a kiss. You gotta make enemies. You gotta be mean to some. But she said, no, don't be dumb. She said, son. I said, no, I'm not your son. My daddy is the king here. Put a sword up your bum if you carry on being mean to me like this. Please don't try and give me a kiss. But she said, okay, George, because that's my name too. She said, I'm going to tell you about the things you need to do to put down the fight and pick up the fun. Go and talk to people like your mum. Friends oh. are good. They have a good time together. No matter what the weather or the grime, the music can be good, classical or rhyme or rap. How about that? So I'm here to tell you two, dad and French dude, that you don't have to fight, you can run around nude. That's what friends do, apparently, they say. I don't know, but there are many other ways that they can play. Like you could play checkers, or cards, or chess, or go to a mecca. It doesn't really matter what you do to me. As long as I see you two happy, what about me? Let's make it three. We could be a triad of unity. Forget mum now, it's me, you and two. That makes three. Yeah, what we gonna do? We could get a lollipop from the shop down the hall. I could bunk off that silly little school. Though I learned one good lesson and they blessed me good. We could go and take the world on in the neighbourhood as three friends where everyone else is enemies. How about that? We could storm the shrubberies just to begin with. There's a little fight that we could try and then we could move up from there. That could be really yeah, good. Like sound, yeah, thanks. Okay. That's about me jumping. Well. My message is just that um, I want you guys to get along and not fight because Mrs. Brown said friends can be fun. Wow. Your son is charming. Th th uh, thank you, my boy. I was all primed to send a, a fleet over to the Americas, but... Such an inspiring message of friendship and camaraderie, I... Well, I just couldn't. Lou? Lou? If I can call you Lou? Lou? Oh, I'm Louis, the, of France. Yeah. <laughs> you... and, and now it's time for Lou to get nude. <laughs> oh, me too. Oh, no. S the child son, is... <laughs> son, put your... <laughs> Put your clothes back on, boy. Get put them Daddy, back on. look, I'm, I'm, I'm Lou, look, turn I'm away, Louis. Louis. No, 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 stop. Ooh. Turn out, Louis. Ooh. Get out. Born to rule over you. King George, four, three, one, and two. You had to do what we told you to. I remember right after recording that, Rob <laughs> Rob was like, oh, I did a little setup um, for Josh because Josh was the third rap. Because when, um, like, when Rob's character goes like, oh, your son is so shit or something like that. <laughs> just so that he wasn't under too much pressure and to do like a good rap. And then Josh came in and absolutely just like knocked Nailed everyone it. over it. <laughs> it's not the most historically accurate uh version of the revolutionary war but it was <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> yeah actually that's what i learned that's um yeah i learned in history class there um yeah it was it was no it's funny with rap battle doing rap battle over zoom because you have to hold your own phone and like bring your own mm. backing track yeah to it whereas on stage it would be it just gets given to you by the 
beautiful techies. Wonderful techies. Shout um, out to our editor, Sabrina. Yeah. Sabrina. We've got Ooh. our techie, Sabrina, is editing these podcasts and making an incredible job of it. Yes. She's um, doing so well. And it's very patient with our whims. Yeah. Because we've had, we've had rejigs. We've had a lot of rejigs. Um, before the... the f- the form that is this one. The form that is this. Yeah. Um, but and yeah, so <laughs> it's just it's just so funny to like generate your own to like bracket, decide to be like thing. okay now I I guess the beat's dropping for yeah. me now. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, I also don't know this little recording thing that we're doing right now. I don't know how to like come back from a scene i feel like ev- after every scene i want to be like hee hee what a funny scene <laughs> but i feel like that's so weird and cloying to the audience i hope you guys don't think i'm weird and cloying audience i don't think you're weird and cloying Hannah. thank you Orla. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh the next game that we're gonna show you is my personal director um which i i adore this game because mm. it's so it's so funny it's so much to fun. play um we recently changed it a couple years well recently a, it was a couple of years ago now because it used to be there were like two actors and then each actor had a director mm-hmm. in the scene but now we've got one director and they like orchestrate the whole scene mm-hmm. um both versions are good i yeah. like both to be honest but yeah, it just oh, it makes for such funny like gifting of character yeah. and like yeah. Maybe it's, we should uh, explain people some improv terms because I feel like we're being like really obnoxious, like gifting, oh, yeah. uh, endowmenty. You know, like I feel like yes. it could be really annoying. That's sometimes. such a that's such a good point. And so yeah. go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say endowment because I mentioned that before when talking about mar- marriage counsellor is just a guessing game, simply. So it's like a game where you get suggestions from the audience and then the players, some of the players don't know what the suggestions are and they have to like find it along the way. Mm-hmm. And then gifting is when mid scene or within a scene one of the players will kind of assign an attribute or like a characteristic or, um, and it could just be a name or. Um, so it would be like if, if Orla walked in and was like, ah, I'm on fire. And I'd be like, okay, but why are you wearing that cool cape or something like that? That would be a gift to Orla that she now has mm-hmm. to be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I like the fashion. That was my beautiful improv. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was and then Thank you um so much. <laughs> <laughs> and then my i guess my personal director is a more over example of gifting because mm. the director is literally telling the actors what to do yeah um but it makes for really fun um really fun scenes mm-hmm. and a lot of just pe- throwing throwing players out of their comfort zone of what how they'd usually play yeah. So this was a game of my personal director where Zach directed and Harriet and Josh were uh, the actors and the Oh, what was the film what was the film title oh, suggestion? Hold on a sec, let me find it. Let me look into I've the doc. The Google Doc. Um so the suggestion for the film title was What a Time. What a time. So do you, do you want me to be off script by this time today or was it Tuesday? It, it, it was this time today, uh, Geraldine. It, it, it was today and quite, quite frankly, I'm appalled because I've turned up to the barn and I've, I've got my lines off script on memory. Right. Well, um, I thought this was the nutty shoot day, so I haven't done that. Is this going to be a problem? Okay, cut. Um, so the villagers in this scene are very excited about the production that they're putting on. It's it's very rare that they that they get to be surrounded by you know camera crews and and lighting rigs. So they're very excited, and I feel like that's not coming across in the in the scene. So I want you to do it again. 
cut to the bit where they're backstage, you know, they're hanging out backstage, and I just want you to, I want some energy, I want some excitement, so, so yeah, okay, so we're gonna take it, we're gonna take it from there, okay. So we're taking, okay. we're taking it back and to that, that kind of hostile, hostile dialogue there, yeah? Yeah. Now, now forward to the nice, amicable, but excited dialogue backstage. But, but, You're about to go on. But we're, we're still slightly hostile. Yeah. No, there's no hostility. Um, see, <laughs> everyone's see, really happy to be there. No, no see, there's the, there's the problem. Ah, there, there's a bit of hostility. Uh, okay. He slept. Um, you say there's hostility. Where's the hostility coming from, huh? Well, let, let's just do the scene and, and we'll find out, shall we? Okay. Uh, right. Um, is that all? Cool. Okay, so lights, camera, and action backstage. You excited, Geraldine? Yes, I am excited. Can't you tell by my excitement in my voice? Is sorry. He, is I, sorry, I, sorry. I'm... Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm really trying to get the the dialogue across well with the excitement, but there is underlying hostility that we have not addressed. Okay, um, is this is this in the script cut? Is this in the script hostility, or is this like poison the poison hostility? Do you think the, Do you think we could do a bit of a warm up just to get, get our sure, yeah. okay? Thanks. Yeah, thanks. let's get let's get let's do a warm up. Let's get mm-hmm. excited. Um. So clo- I want you guys to close your eyes. Okay. And imagine you're in a village in Australia, and um, and and you got a big production crew, and there there are lights everywhere, and you've never seen this before. You're just a simple, you know, wheat farmer, and you're excited, and you see you see you see stars all around. There's Robert De Niro and. He's in the background, and Johnny Julia Depp. Roberts. She's she's doing her thing, and you're excited, okay? So, so when we try it again, I want you to capture that, please. Thank you very much. Okay, you're on stage, okay? We're gonna take it from there, okay? And we're gonna do we're gonna do the love scene where you propose, Billy. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do the love scene where you propose, okay? Yeah, and you're yeah. Excited, because yeah, saying, I've got it. Okay, cool. Are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, are we at the end of the pier or are we, are we just coming up to it? The pier? Yeah. Like, like the physic. oh, um. The metaphorical I mean the pier. pier, the metaphorical pier. Come on. Um, physical pier, to clarify, physical pier, you are near, metaphorical pier. We're nowhere near away. that. Nowhere near that. Okay, that, that's okay. all I needed. Thank you. Okay. Right. <sighs> Boy, Action. Your, 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 your eyes, your, 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 your touch, the, the wonderful lyricism that you that you have. I found it, it to quench my thirst, and and I didn't want to say this out in the open with the public walking by. I didn't want to have my affection towards you thought of as a mere, a mere show, because it's not. I've, I've enjoyed being with you for a long long time and ever since we shared that picnic on the boulevard i uh i haven't been able to think anything else but this darling i was hoping sorry let me just get get out the the ring i i was hoping maybe that you might want to sorry w- would you do me the honor of being my wife no okay cut um, Billy, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be frank with you, both of you. In fact, you sound you sound like a serial killer. It's, okay, it's and the hostility. Fine. There's hostility. I know. Okay, so what I want you to do, we're gonna cut to the bit where we actually get some hostility in the play, where the couple toying on each other and when they start to kill each other. And I want you to use that hostility that's obviously bubbling over the surface now. And I want you to really channel that. This is a dark moment and I'm I'm getting you're not in the vibe for a happy, excited scene. So I want you to channel that. If you got me, if you you understand? Yeah. Can I can I take it from when she um turns Welsh? Yeah, of course. Yeah, is that the bit you're talking about? Yeah? Uh not exactly, but sure. <laughs> Let's go from there, okay? Uh, lights, camera, 
action hostility. Well, to be quite frank, Billy, I want to kill you. And I know this is not how uh, you wanted this to come across. And um, I just I just don't like you anymore, to be frank. No, no, I, I get that. I don't much like you either. Shall we just call it a day then? I, I, I think so. I feel there's I... no need to get aggressive, is there? <laughs> Funny you should yeah. say that a couple minutes after threatening to kill me, Geraldine. But I'm I'm one who likes to avoid confrontation. So yes, let's let's part ways. Great. I'll take little Johnny, and you can take Susie Leslie. Sue and, and Leslie. Leslie. If you want them both, you can have them. Girls were never really my strong point. No, I can see that. I suppose this is goodbye then, Geraldine. I should think so, yes. Can I ask you one more favour? Of course. The hot pot. What was the recipe? Oh, bit of cumin. Okay, cut. Look, cut. Look, no one's gonna watch What a Time, a rural Australian love story turned wrong. So, let's just put this out there and then we can all get a good night's rest, huh? Huh? Yeah, that uh, sounds good to me. Okay, same time tomorrow. Bye bye. I got one less problem without you. I got one less problem without you. I got one I love that one. <laughs> I also love that Harriet gifted herself with doing a Welsh accent. Because she's what so a power good move. at the so she's so good at the Welsh accent. She loves she loves it. That was my first time hearing her Welsh accent, and I I'm I'm floored. Yeah, it I was mean, beautiful. I mean, it's it's an experience for everyone. The first time it they hear me, it, <laughs> right, it took me right there, <laughs> right, right there being Wales. <laughs> right there being right in the middle of Cardiff <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so this is our second recording of this segment because the first time we were recording it I panicked and said how is your pandemic going the dreaded question the dreaded <laughs> question so let's talk about something else um, so we completely vetoed it we completely but deleted it and you'll we never were then hear reminiscing. It. Yeah, it's gone forever. It's gone but forever. we were re- well. I was reminiscing, and Hannah was futurising <laughs> about live shows coming back. Mm. Um, what do you? Uh, what, what are you missing the most about live shows? I think probably, um, well, definitely just the whole atmosphere of the theatre. Mm. But also, like the I don't know the the pre show warm up. Mm. And the whole, like, even like just putting on the t-shirt, yeah, the da- like yeah. dance, like we always do, we always do a dance before, before the show, and yeah, just use also using physical comedy again. Mm-hmm. I, think. I was thinking actually, I feel like it's like so much more obvious when you break on audio. Because, Mm. like, when you're on stage, if you're doing something and you're just having a little giggle, it's not, like, the main focus of attention. But obviously with audio, it's literally just, you're just laughing. Yeah, it's right in in someone's ear. Oh, God, this is so obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I... I, Sorry. No, no, after you, please. I was going to say, I used to... I do do stand-up, and I really, really Mm -hmm. just miss a live audience, like, so much. So much. How long have you been doing stand up for? <sighs> many, many years. No, um, I started in first year, and I just do it like sporadically. Yeah, with it, that's with the review. The review, right? Yeah, shout, the review also has a podcast. If you are not sated by all the comedy you have listened today, head over <laughs> to the Edinburgh Review podcast as well. Give them a listen. I rem- I think I remember seeing you do a review show in f- in first year. Really. Yeah, oh. I, it's cu- it's coming back to me now. Oh my god, PTSD. that must have been you. <laughs> yeah, something about um someone's girlfriend on on Skype. Oh my god, yeah, 
Yeah, that was a, oh, yeah, that was terrible. It was a very um, traumatic flatmate I had in first year. Oh, who, no. I really don't like the term, like, oh, crazy girlfriend, because, you know, it's usually sexist. Usually they're fine, and it's the dude mm-hmm. who's being an arsehole. But she was uh, quite aggressive to any of the female uh, wow. flatmates in the room, and it was scary. <laughs> That's yeah, that's quite intense. Mm. But it was it was good. good I mean, it was great so. fodder for stand up. So I really like Love nothing's <laughs> trauma. It can all be material. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, we actually have our final game now. Um, we're going to play you a clip of a game we played this week called Alien Interview. The kind of premise of this game is that it's three players: one person who plays a talk show host, and then two people who play a kind of two-headed alien that have been invited on the talk show to discuss some cultural matter of the moment. Um, The two-headed alien can only speak in one word at a time, so the player usually, the players kind of switch who's speaking. And in this game, Rob is the host and Sophie and Ola are the alien. So enjoy. Discussing the uh, (laughs) stuttering crisis. Oh, yes. (laughs) That's an important part of the scene. Shetland jumpers are back in fashion and hotter than ever. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're back. Thanks all for coming back to listen. I, I've been off the air for several months on account of my suspension, but it's great to be back on the airwaves having negotiated a brand new deal with Talk Radio. And it's a doozy to start the new season off, everybody. I, as you know, am prone to all manner of controversy and anger. And few things have provoked more controversy and anger than the resurgence of the Shetland Jumper into today's popular discourse. To discuss the issue with me today is Professor Emeritus at the so-called University of Bristol. Would you like to introduce yourself and say a a little bit about what you think about the current crisis? Yeah, I'm Mr... Emeritus, and uh, I am so smart. Oh, I see. Right. Well, uh, we love a we love a rigid debate here on Ali McBeal's evening meal, and I have to say that I think this is this is going to be a good one. So let's just get right into it. Uh, you seem to think that the return of the Shetland jumper is a good thing. That the buying of wool from uh, uh, local producers in, in Scotland uh, is going to be good for the economy and that it's uh, increasingly, uh, it's a much warmer fabric for the increasingly uh, freezing climate that we all live in. Um, I would put it to you that that's a lie. Well, you are not a smart liar. You are a silly boy. Mm, interesting. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would I would counterpoint there that I'm thirty two and therefore way outside. Men uh, are not thirty two. They are sheep. Okay, so this is all coming through now. This is classic agenda stuff. Uh, Men can be 32. I am 32. I've been 32 for years. Man. No. Uh, man. No. Man. No. No, you could say man, man no. Man, that's sheep. what it's come to, is it? Yes. Man. Yeah, well, uh, no. uh, who's the sheep, really? Sheep. You know? Yeah. Who's the sheep? Man. It, it, you, no. you're, uh, sheep. You're the one here defending Shetland jumpers. That's a pretty sheep-like thing to do, don't you think? The sheep are good and the men are not the okay okay think uh, uh, the boy is mad no no i'm going to have to stop you there look um we, we've had a couple of emails in and I'd, I'd really like to get your response to these actually um this is from uh chris shannon hi chris uh long time listener first hi. yeah I'll, Chris! 
Chris says, uh, how can you justify the impact that the resurgence of the Shetland jumper has on the manufacture of the Aaron jumper? Another staple classic in, in the Scottish jumper canon. He makes a good point, don't you think? Well, Aaron is tired. He has lots to do. So big jumpers need resting. I see. Well, you can appeal to the hearts and minds of my listenership all you like, but but they're loyal to me. You understand? Loyal listeners do like. You make a good point. The second email here is from Ashley Williams. Hi. Who lives... Ashley Williams. They, they can't hear you. I'm reading emails. Ashley says... Long time listener, first time. Yeah. Been a... No, no relation to the other Ali McBeal. Uh, oh, this is... Here we go. She asks uh, what she could do to pad out her CV as she would like to study at the so-called University of Bristol. The... You... Use... Sheep... Well... Man... That's about all we got time for this evening. Sheep! Well, no, 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 I talk now. I talk. Sheep. Wh- wool. Man. Man. No. What's happening? Good. Wool. Sheep. Sheep. Age. Big. Man. Help. Man. Help. Baba Black Sheep, have you ever- Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> Those are all the games. Final game, baby. So we will be doing l- recording lots more games in weeks to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're hoping to get another episode out this time next week with two different uh, other players. Um, yeah, there'll be new hosts. Mm-hmm. So right now, different so combinations. Me, Ola, um. Rob, Josh, Sophie, Harriet, and Zach are the people who are all part of the Improvert team right yes. now. So every week we're having like multiple Zoom calls and just recording a couple of games, having a bit of fun. And then um, each week is going to be different to having a little chat about the games and doing a mm-hmm. sort of hosting and interim bit. And then, uh, yeah, we're hoping you're enjoying it so far. We're still kind of working out all the kinks and the format and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. I think I've improved my technology skills this past week <laughs> more than I've improved my uh, my brain for my whole four year university career degree. Yeah, <laughs> I've learned how to so use audacity. That. I know mm-hmm. what a gain is. It's I know what a USB thing. mic. Wait, did you say a game? A gain. <laughs> I, like, I just baby. learned what an improv game is. <laughs> I don't know how I got on the team. <laughs> um, yes. We, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want to get involved, we are going to be posting little chances to give us suggestions for the games that we um, do. Mm-hmm. And on the Keep Instagram, an eye on our story. Keep an eye on our Instagram, Instagram story. story. At. I keep saying Instagram. It's a good, Instagram. It's a good portmanteau, man. I don't stop you. Um, so I think it's just the improverts on Instagram, isn't it? Yes, at the yes, improverts. At the improverts, uh, go have a look. Suggest some things. If you want to be anonymous, that's also cool. But if you tell us that you want to be known, we can say mm-hmm. who the um, who the suggestion came from. Give you a little shout out. How fun! A little bit of community. Yeah, it's actually been so nice getting um, suggestions from people that aren't each other mm. recently because it does it's yeah so it, nice it feels like the community's back yeah and um and it's not just like some people as much as i love each other on a zoom call yeah <laughs> into the void it's so funny because we always when because 
um, when we do workshops, we've we've been doing workshops for a while, and we play we play the games to practice them, and we always have to give suggestions to each mm. other and they just get like weirder and weirder yeah and more obscure and then you'll go and do a show and there'll be like these incredible just simple lovely suggestions that you're like oh my god I yes <laughs> thank you I will <laughs> um yeah so that's that's it from us see you next week lots of love hope you're all doing very well yeah take care and speak soon speak to you soon bye bye